How to add new tile type in the turn-based tactic project. Tile types are mainly used by the pathfinding and are going to affect how the units are going to walk on the grid. Some tile types are more expensive than others, depending how easy it is to walk on the ground that is under them. Because it's probably simpler to walk on grass compared to let's say mud for example. And you can also use the tile types to limit which units can walk on which tile. For example, if you have holes on your grid, you probably only want the units that are able to fly to cross them. So yeah, with the tile types you can add a lot of flavors to your game. Game, so that's why today I'm going to show you how to add new ones. So let's get to it. So in Unreal, we're going to create a new tile type and we're going to add it inside a few of our levels so we can limit which units can walk on these tiles. And the new tile type we're going to create is the water type. So only the units that knows how to swim are going to be able to walk onto those tiles. And to create a new tile type, everything is inside the E tile type enum that we have right here inside the grid utilities folder. So inside that enum, we have all the different tile types that are currently available in the game. So we have the normal tiles, the obstacles, the tile that cost a double to walk onto them, triple to walk onto them, and finally the flying units only tiles that are only available by the flying units. And in our case, we want to add a new type. So I'm just going to add a new enum, which I'm going to name water because that's the water type we're going to add today. And then we can close the enum because the tile type is added. And now everything in the game knows that this tile type exists. But we're not done yet because now we created the new tile type and that's good, but the game doesn't know what to do with it. We never define what this tile type means and we're gonna do that inside the BFL tile data that we have right here. So let's open BFL tile data and in there we have three functions we can modify to define what to do with this tile type. So first the first function that we have right here is the is tile type walkable. In this function we can decide if the units are able to walk on this new tile type and as you can see right now only the tiles of type none and obstacle are never going to be walkable by the units. All the other tile types are going to be walkable by either a specific type of unit, for example the flying units or any other units. And in our case, since the water tile type is going to be walkable by the swimming units, we don't have to add it in this array right here because it's just for the tile types that are never going to be walkable. So that's good. We can ignore this function and we can go to the next one, the get tile type cost. So let's open that one. And in this function, it's really just to specify how many movement points it costs for the unit to enter that tile. So for example, the normal tile types are going to cost one movement point. The none and obstacle are zero because they are ignored anyway. The double cost cost double, the triple cost cost triple, obviously. And finally, the flying units only cost one movement point to enter those tiles. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the water. I'm going to only limit it to one movement point. So one movement point cost. Because in this case, I don't want to affect how many movement points it costs to enter the tile. I just want to be able to limit specific units from going into the tile completely. So the units that knows how to swim are just going to be able to swim through the tile normally the same way if the tile was just a normal tile and all the other units are not going to be able to enter the tile at all so that's pretty good we're done with the cost of the tile now the last thing we have to do is the tile type color so we have the color right here and that color is really just when we are displaying the tactical grid in game so when we are displaying the tactical grid right now the normal tiles are gray the obstacle are red and the flying units only are pink and we're going to do the same thing with the water tile types it's a special tile type so let's add a special color to it and right now since it's water i'm just going to make it a little bit of a tint of blue here we go so now all the tiles that are going to be water on the grid are going to be displayed as blue when we are displaying the tactical grid so now we're done configuring the tile everything is set up and now we can close the bfl tile data but now if we go use the tile in the game no units are going to be able to walk onto it because it's a new tile type and we never told any of our units that are able to walk on top of water or actually swim in water. So what we're going to do is go through all of our units and add the possibility to walk onto this new tile type if they are able to swim. So what we're going to do is go inside the units folder, inside the utilities folder. In here we have the data table that controls all the statistics of our units, so the DT default unit data per type. So let's open the data table and in there we have all the stats of our units. So I have my warrior, priest, ranger, etc. So I have all the different units and now what we're going to do is decide which units are going to be able to walk on top of water or actually swim in it. Uh, actually my bat, that one is flying and it's not really swimming in water but probably makes sense that the bat is able to fly on top of the water. So let's select the bat real quick and then I'm going to add a new tile type right here in the stats valid tile type. Add a new tile type that the units can walk on and we're going to select the water tile type. Next maybe let's say the slime. The slime is probably able to slime on top of water. I don't know how slime works in real life but whatever in the stats a valid tile type
type, let's add a new tile type for the slime and it, that's gonna be water. So the slime is also able to cross water and finally let's say the ranger knows how to swim. The warrior has a too heavy armor to be able to swim so whatever and the priest just doesn't know how to swim. So let's just make the ranger able to swim in water. That just makes sense in my opinion. So add a new valid tile type and add the water tile type. Here we go. So now we have three units that are going to be able to cross water. So we can close the data table and now we're ready for real to add the new tile type in the game and use it. And now to add the water tile type to the tiles, uh, there's two ways you can do it and I'm gonna show them both to you today. The first way is by using the grid modifiers to apply the tile type automatically during the grid generations. To do that, let's go in the, the grid folder that we have right here and we have the BP grid modifier. You can add those modifiers in your levels anywhere you want to apply a new tile types to the tile. So for example, since I have my level square right here, I'm going to work on it. So let's double click on this one and now I have my level square and here you can see that I already have a bunch of different grid modifiers in the level. I have the purple grid modifier right here that applies the flying units only tile type right here that you can see on the right. I have the gray grid modifier that I have right here which applies the double cost tile type. I have this one right here that applies the triple cost and finally I have a bunch of red ones all over the place that are applying the obstacle tile type. And all these tile type are applied automatically during the grid generation. So in our case if we want to add a new tile type to the styles we can simply add a new grid modifier into the level anywhere you want or even simpler you can modify an existing grid modifier so i'm going to select this one right here and change the type to let's say water here you go the grid generation should apply the water tile type to those styles instead of the flying units only but that's not exactly what we wanted to do we wanted to add new grid modifiers to the levels not modify the current uh, grid modifiers that are already in the level so let's do that instead i'm going to make sure that i'm in my square level so double click on the level grab the grid modifier modifier and drop it in the level. So let's say right here I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Why not? Because I want to uh, have a lot of water tiles in my level. So let's say all these tiles right here. I'm going to overlap all of those and then I'm going to go on the right and change the type to water instead of obstacle. And now we can see that we have a blue grid modifier on top of those tiles. Which means that during the grid generation it should apply the water type to those tiles. So let's try that actually. I'm going to play the level right now. I'm going to go in my debug mode. Here we go. In here I don't have a grid so let's go in the grid tab to generate a new square grid that fits with the square level and now we can see that well we don't see anything because we're not in tactical mode and we only displays the tile colors in tactical mode. So to make sure that it works let's go in tactical mode and here we go. Now we can see that we have a bunch of blue tiles on the grid because they are overlapped by water type grid modifiers. And now all the units that are not able to swim should not be able to walk on top of those tiles. But before we test that, I'm going to show you the second way you can change the tile types of your tiles on the grid. And that's going to be by code. So if we go on the left right here, we have the set tile type function, actually action. So we have the set tile type action and under it, you can select which tile type you want to apply to the tile. So for example, I can apply double cost right here and we can see that it changes the color of the tiles. But in our case, we don't care about that one. We want to apply water tile types. So here we go. I'm going to apply water to my tiles right here, right here, right here. And why not? Like all over the place. Here we go. I have a bunch of water all over the place. And that should really affect how the units are going to walk on the grid. But before we test all that, I'm going to show you how you can find the code that was used by this action because you probably want to do it by code on your side too and you want to know how I did it. So my actions are pretty nice. They are all classes in the project, so it's super easy to find them. So if I look for set tile type in my project, so I'm gonna go in my project right here and search for set tile type, we can see that it shows the button that we have in the user interface right here and also the action that exists executes the set tile type for real. So let's open the action to see how the code looks and that's going to be inside the execute action function like all the other actions that are in the project and here it is. This is how I'm setting the tile type of my tiles. At the beginning of the action I'm checking to make sure that the tile is valid before setting the tile type. You don't want to set the tile type to an invalid tile obviously and then I'm going to go on the right a little bit and here I'm setting the tile type to my tile using the add grid tile function. I know it looks a little bit weird but it's not that weird actually because my grid tiles are in a map so every time we are adding a new grid tile if the tile already exists in the mapping it's going to replace it with the new data and that's why I'm making sure to set all the previous data back inside the tile so it doesn't overwrite everything else and that's why right here at the beginning I'm just fetching the current data of my tile so 
in my girl tiles, I'm fetching the current data, setting it in a local variable that I'm going to reuse right here to reset all the data back inside the tile, except the tile type, because we want to modify the tile type, so that's why I'm modifying the tile type, obviously. So yeah, super simple. You just have to do an add grid tile, whatever you want to modify, in this case, the tile type, and that's going to work. And as you saw, you can do that anytime you want in the game, even during the combat. So we can really modify the grid as much as you want while the units are fighting on top of it. But for now, it's time to test all that because right now we just applied a bunch of blue on top of the grid and we're not really sure that it works for real. So we're just going to add a few units on top of the grid and ask them to move to see if it works. I'm going to go in my pathfinding tab and add a few units on the grid. Actually, I'm going to add one unit of each type to make sure that it works and all the proper units are going to be able to walk on the water and the other ones are not going to be able to so i'm just going to add okay here we go i have a wire ranger priest a bat slime and my chicken right here and i'm going to ask my unit to move on the grid so select and move i'm going to start by my warrior right here i'm going to select it and i'm not able to walk on top of the water because the warrior is not able to swim so i cannot uh, walk on top of the blue tiles and the warrior is stuck in this little corner right here because because, well, I cannot swim. So yeah, that's sad. My ranger, though, that one should be able to swim. And now the ranger is able to go see the warrior, no problem, and leave the area, no problem also, because the ranger knows how to swim, and that's pretty nice. The priest doesn't know, so the priest is a little bit stuck right here in the little corner. The bat doesn't know, but doesn't have to know, because it can fly over all the water types. So woo, the bat can fly all over the place, no problem. Here we go, it works. My chicken should probably be stuck in the little corner right here yeah you can see that the chicken is stuck and has to walk around the water to reach anywhere on the grid because it doesn't know how to swim but the chicken can walk a lot so that's pretty good too anyway now the last unit i have is the slime and in the data we said that the slime was able to walk on top of the water also so we can see that if i move my slime around the slime is able to walk on top of the water perfect so we can see that it works and now you know how to add any tile type you want in your game and use them to affect the pathfinding of all your different units. So that's gonna be it for today's video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye!